Tonight, we're moving from the turf field to the basketball court as we welcome two members of Marywood's women's basketball team to the program. Beyond the Arch starts right now. We're welcoming the two captains of the women's basketball team to Beyond the Arch tonight. Our guests were key components of a team that went 12-4 and in conference and reached the Colonial States Athletic Conference semifinals and the ECACs last season. One of our guests is Alyssa Olson, a senior guard from Port Jefferson Station, New York. She is a graduate of Comswag High School, where she was named All-League and All-County on the court. At Marywood, she has been named to the CSAC Academic Honor Roll each of the last two seasons. Last year, she started in 19 games for the Pacers, racking up 52 assists and shooting a high 50% from three-point range. She majors in marketing and management. Our other guest is a senior forward slash center, Natasha Hessling. She hails from Honesdale, Pennsylvania and attended Honesdale High School. At Honesdale, she was a member of teams that won three District 2 Class 3A championships. She was also named an honorable mention to the Scranton Times Tribune's team. She has been named to the CSAC All-Academic Team once and the Academic Honor Roll twice. In her sophomore season, she was named second team all CSAC and had been named CSAC Player of the Week twice. Last season, she started all 26 games the Pacers played and shot an impressive 55% from the field while pulling down 7.9 rebounds per game. She majors in environmental science. Before I sit down with them, I go one-on-one -on -one with Alyssa Olson and Natasha Hessling. Next. You've messed up your son's haircut. Mom? Do you A, try to fix it? Like it never happened. B, work with what you got. Or C, show solidarity. Thank you, baby. As a parent, there are no perfect answers. But you don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. Thousands of teens in foster care will love you just the same. This is the story of a boy who is very sensitive to lights and sounds. So he built secret hiding places where nothing could get in. The boy didn't like looking people in the eye. It made him feel uncomfortable. One day, he found out he had something called autism. His family got him help. And slowly, he learned how to live with it better. Early intervention can make a lifetime of difference. Learn the signs at AutismSpeaks.org. They said I have troll teeth. That my voice sounded like a possessed baby doll. That no one would ever love someone as stupid as me. That I was fat. Ugly. Disgusting. The effect of bullying is potent. We will no longer be the silent majority. Now, when you see online bullying, there's something you can do about it. We're going to take action with the eye. I am a witness. I am a witness. I am a witness. I am a witness. I am a witness, and so are you. Today, we're at the Insulaco Arena where I'm about to go one on one with Marywood women's basketball players Natasha Hessling and Alyssa Olson. We're hitting the hardwood at BTA.
So who's going to do what? I'll pack the dead batteries. Great. I'll only put what I don't need into a duffel bag. Perfect. That's totally unhelpful. No problem. Meanwhile, I will try to comfort everyone by speaking in a calm voice. And who is going to handle supplies? I can forget to do a list for us. Thanks, pal. We couldn't be any less prepared. I'm proud of you guys. Talk to your kids about who to call, where to meet, what to pack. Visit ready.gov slash kids for tips and information. Chipmunks want to remind you, bacteria can hide in food and make you ill. Wow. But you can keep bacteria from ruining your day with four simple steps. Clean. I'm waiting for the rain cycle. Separate. <laughs> Cook. Fire in the hole. And chill. We chipmunks are notoriously tidy. Check your steps. The road trip to food safety starts at foodsafety.gov. There are 16 million children struggling with hunger in America. That's one in five daughters, sons, neighbors, and classmates who don't know where their next meal is coming from. Yet billions of pounds of good food go to waste every year. It's time we do something about it. Feeding America is a nationwide network of food banks that helps provide meals to millions of kids and families in need. Visit feedingamerica.org to help them feed even more. Together, we can solve hunger. Together, we're Feeding America. Welcome back to the show. I'm pleased to be joined by Alyssa Olsen and Natasha Hesseling. Alyssa, Natasha, thank you very much for being here. Thanks, Thanks for, for having us. us. We're really happy to have you here. It's an exciting time for Marywood basketball. The season's almost here. Everybody gets really excited about basketball. So we're going to get to all that in a little bit. But first of all, we're going to learn more about who you guys are and how you fit into a little student-athlete mold. So why don't we start with how did you find your way to Marywood, if you could think all the way back. Well, I wanted to go to a school that had basketball, obviously, and I kind of wanted to be able to do basketball and, you know, do schooling and everything. So um, when I got to Mario campus, I, it just felt like home to me. Mm -hmm. It was just like I love the coaches and I love the business program altogether. So that was a big thing for me. Mm -hmm. I'm a very, like, homebody person. So just That's knowing homie. that, yeah. yeah, knowing that it was just like very homey for me <laughs> was like the ultimate deciding factor. Natasha? <coughs> yeah, I live close to Marywood, so I was familiar with the campus for a long time and I actually played some high school games here mm -hmm. and I liked the campus for a long time and then I liked the coaches and it fit with what I wanted to study, so I liked it. 
Now, Alyssa, you know, I, I had a similar experience when I came here that it kind of felt just like the right. A lot of people tend to say that about the school, that it kind of just feels like the right fit when you're here. So mm -hmm. what do you attribute that most to? What do you think caused that more than anything else? Was there one factor you could point to? I think a big thing was I had a kind of like a small high school. Mm -hmm. I graduated with around like 300 kids. Mm -hmm. So it was relatively small, just like Marywood. And I think that was a big thing. I don't mm -hmm. think I could ever go to a really big school. Right. <laughs> It'd be very, very different, mm -hmm. um, especially if like taking a bus or whatever, I would no, never yeah, to class and stuff. But um, yeah, no, a big a thing. You workout walking across campus. <laughs> oh yeah, no, most definitely. Um, but a big thing was it, uh, Marywood being very small. Mm -hmm. And I think that was a big, factor too. Sure. And <coughs> Natasha, you said you played games here and you're mm -hmm. very familiar with it, so how big of a deal was that for you, just the familiarity? Was that the number one factor, do you think? Or um, Yeah, I liked it because I got to be close to my family too, um, so that was a uh, big factor for me. And mm -hmm. I, I played in the gym, obviously, right. so then like I was familiar with it and I felt comfortable playing mm -hmm. at the collegiate level then. Right, so now decision to come here, we asked this of almost all the athletes because you get some different responses, but was it more academically driven, more athletically driven? Would you say it's 50-50? Um, I would say originally it was basically more so basketball-wise, but as soon as I kind of got more into looking at, you know, the whole marketing mm -hmm. um, department, things like that, it was it's 50-50, I would say, mm -hmm. more so now. Natasha? Yeah, I would agree. Like, it was definitely more basketball geared at first mm -hmm. and then once I met like the different professors and stuff it I really liked the how the academics were too so it worked. So now you're a marketing major right? Yes. Okay so how does how do you like the program first of all? Well I absolutely love the program mm -hmm. um, I'm really close with all my professors which is nice um, I'm actually dual majoring now in management as well just because I like taking the extra courses and getting more involved with the whole program. I'm actually going for my master's in business administration now too. Oh, so nice. Yeah, I'm taking grad classes. Well, yes. <laughs> Probably challenging a little bit, but. Yes, yeah, a little bit. You love it though. Yes. Gotta love, trust the process. Yes. Most of the Six year would say. <laughs> but, um, how do you feel as though the major fits into your on the court? Um, Abilities is it is it difficult ever to balance basketball and your major or uh, and your other classes? Sometimes it could be a little bit challenging, but it has actually basketball has helped me to stay organized. Mm -hmm. That's a big thing. I'm a big planner person, mm -hmm. so I like to plan everything out and make sure I'm getting all my schoolwork done. And that's and knowing all the game schedules, like all the practice schedules and stuff like that, it keeps mm -hmm. me more so focused on school as well. Right. So <coughs> Natasha, environmental science, right? I actually changed oh, last year to okay. biotechnology. Oh, very interesting. Yes. So why, well, I guess why the change then, if you don't mind, um, and then do you I like the program? Yes, I love the program. Mm -hmm. I actually took a class in biotech and I just fell in love with it. I kept environmental science as a minor. Interesting. Um, yeah, th I just love the professor in the class. And um, they have a five-year program also, so I'm doing the master's program and taking grad classes cool. now too. So, same question as I asked Alyssa. Um, how do you feel as though the workload fits into your basketball schedule? Yeah, it is, it is hard sometimes, especially like all um, the teammates, like our class schedules are different and it's hard to uh, manage practice around them sometimes. So mm -hmm. we have like 6 a.m.s and it makes it hard to get work done sometimes. Mm -hmm. You gotta go to bed early, but the time management, you really learn how to get your work done and not slack off. Do you see any overlap, either of you, between your, I mean, this maybe it's a little more of an abstract question, but do you see any overlap between what you do on the court and what you do in the classroom? Is there some sort of an, even if it's just discipline or something like that, is there are certain values on the court translate to the classroom, do you think? Oh, that's a good question. But I would probably say even like leadership skills, mm -hmm. um, as like a marketing major and a management major, especially the management major, you have to, you're in demand, like you mm -hmm. have to get the best out of what you have. Mm -hmm. And I think a big factor in, that goes into that with basketball is that as captains, like we have to get the best out of everyone and make sure everyone's working hard and mm -hmm. getting all their schoolwork done and everything like that too, so. <coughs> and Natasha? Yeah, I think discipline is a big thing, but also, um, you have to put in 100% in your mm -hmm. in the classroom to do well. Like, 
you can't slack off or one you can't play and right. you need to put a hundred percent in on the court also or you're not gonna play you're not gonna play well where do you guys think you get your motivation from to force yourself like you to basically do you know a lot more work it's fair to say than some other students have to do here and because you have you have a rigorous practice schedule and you have your classes so where is your source of motivation for that? I think just in general, I'm a motivated person. Um, I like to work hard in general. Um, but overall, um, that's a good question. <laughs> well, if you're self-motivated, that's, that's no, how yeah. people are. Yeah, I would say that. <laughs> that's fine. Sorry. <laughs> and Natasha? Yeah, I think like just <laughs> having the love for the sport mm -hmm. kind of just motivates you like it's it's a grind but we've been doing it for so long and we don't know anything different and that's motivation enough to it, love. is there one person you guys would point to as someone who has had a big impact on you as both you know on the court and off it sort of like a mentor what do you think I would definitely say probably my parents mm -hmm. they have helped me through absolutely everything. They've pushed me to my limit, um, especially like my mom and, well, my mom, yeah. Mm -hmm. She would kick my butt, you know, if <laughs> I, I wasn't playing the best yeah. or if I wasn't doing as well in school. Mm -hmm. And same with my dad, my dad more so with basketball wise because he played basketball as well, but yeah. um, most definitely like my parents as a big mentor for me. Natasha? I'd say my parents too. Popular they, answer. Yeah. <laughs> Why your parents? Um, they they were just always there, like cheering me on and motivating me and but they also knew when to like step back from sports and like take my mind off if it was stressing me out and like Liz said, like in the classroom, like keep your grades up mm -hmm. and all that, yeah. Well, lots of good stuff going on here. So we will have much more with Liz and Natasha right after this. Stick around. You've messed up your son's haircut. Mom? Do you A, try to fix it? Like it never happened. B, work with what you've got. Or C, show solidarity. Thank you, baby. As a parent, there are no perfect answers. But you don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. Thousands of teens in foster care will love you just the same. This is the story of a boy who is very sensitive to lights and sounds. So he built secret hiding places where nothing could get in. The boy didn't like looking people in the eye. It made him feel uncomfortable. One day, he found out he had something called autism. His family got him help. And slowly, he learned how to live with it better. Early intervention can make a lifetime of difference. Learn the signs at AutismSpeaks.org. They said I have troll teeth. That my voice sounded like a possessed baby doll. That no one would ever love someone as stupid as me. That I was fat. Ugly. Disgusting. The effect of bullying is potent. We will no longer be the silent majority. Now, when you see online bullying, there's something you can do about it. We're going to take action with the eye. I am a witness. I am a witness. I am a witness. I am a witness. I am a witness, and so are you. Welcome back to Beyond the Arch as my conversation with Alyssa and Natasha shifts to the upcoming season of basketball. So, all right, we got we learned all about you guys, and we want to learn about the sport that you love. So I think we'll start with Natasha this time. We let Alyssa do a lot of the <laughs> reading off last, last round there. So, okay, um, you guys are both the team captains now this year. Mm -hmm. So if you would talk a little bit about what, what kind of, a, well, first of all, how do you feel about that, and what kind of an added responsibility is that, or do you feel as a result of that? Well, I feel like there's a lot of added responsibility with, um, you know, like a new coach. And for most of the summer, we didn't have a coach. So mm -hmm. we kind of had to 
like rope the girls in and like try to get them motivated without having someone higher up and that put a lot of pressure on us and like we were worried like maybe they wouldn't listen and I'm a more shy person so like I struggle sometimes with like trying to be like loud and um, but I think I've come a long way <laughs> with, I with so being too. a captain <laughs> but mm-hmm. I think we've both been doing a good job this season. I'm sure you are. Alyssa? I think it could be very, very challenging at times. Um, it definitely uh, like pushes the limit of being a leader. Mm-hmm. And it getting that like motivation out of girls, mm-hmm. sometimes you don't realize how hard it yeah. can be. Um, especially, like Tash said, we, we have a new coach and mm-hmm. you don't know who's coming in. So you think you could be like chillaxed and everything and <laughs> and but in reality like it's it's game time no, we got no. we got to be ready and me and Tasha are both seniors and it's mm-hmm. our last season so right. that was a big thing too is we got to make sure everyone's motivated and and ready to go for a season well, what makes a good leader on the court <laughs> you know who wants to go first what do you think is the one quality above all else that makes you know a great leader i think being able to communicate to mm-hmm. the girls not like yell at them Mm -hmm. but like get your point across to them and motivate them Mm -hmm. in a way that they want to work hard for you and do well for the team definitely also setting a good example Mm -hmm. in front of everyone um if let's say i mess up in a drill my bad my bad right just making sure that um accountability accountability yes Mm -hmm. most definitely um because that's definitely a big thing because if I'm not playing defense, mm-hmm. then why are the other girls going to play defense? So that was a big thing is mm-hmm. accountability. So, <coughs> you, know, we'll see, you know, you mentioned before senior season. So I imagine, you know, it's kind of probably emotional in a way because it's, you know, I mean, you've done this for your whole life now. And, mm-hmm. you know, you have one last go around the Marywood. So, what I mean, what is your, what's your attitude going into the season? Is it kind of like treating it like another season? Do you, is it tough to do that knowing that this, you know, this is all or nothing in a way for you guys? Well, what, what do you think? Okay. Um, I think more so it's a mentality of I want to kick butt. I want to mm-hmm. put everything on the floor um, that I haven't previously done, mm-hmm. or you know, I w- it's it's very very different. Mm-hmm. Um, it almost motivates you ten times more because sure. you're going to be on that court mm-hmm. like one last season. Right. So you just got to make sure that you have no regrets at the end of the day. So. <coughs> Yeah, we talk almost every day. It's like, oh, this is the last time we mm-hmm. have a practice this day or last yeah. first scrimmage. And it, it, like Liz said, it's a big motivation to really put it all out there. And oh, yeah, and I, think, I think a lot of times in life we're faced with those kind of situations, but they're almost kind of necessary in a way because they allow you to reflect on all the good times you had, sort of, mm-hmm. and you realize that it's kind of like life is like, you know, moving on and mm-hmm. on bigger and better things, sort of, but also appreciating the great opportunity you have in front of you. But so, we, you have a new coach, and, mm-hmm. uh, you know, so uh, Gabby Holcall. Mm-hmm. And so let's talk a little bit, if you would, about what kind of changes you've seen in maybe the system, or are we going to see a similar brand of basketball, do you think, that we've been used to seeing in Marywood, or is the scheme a little different? I mean, without giving away too much or whatever, <laughs> but whoever, whoever wants to go first. I think it's going to be very different. Mm-hmm. Um, coach is very, very positive, and mm-hmm. that's like the thing that we need right now. Mm-hmm. It's just positivity, because we're pretty mm-hmm. young. We have, right. I think, six freshmen, maybe oh. a l- five freshmen, but mm-hmm. um, we're really young, so that's a big thing. We, we need a confidence boost. Mm-hmm. Um, and she holds us accountable as well. Mm-hmm. So I think it's going to be very different. We've been having a lot of tough practices, but they're well, well worth it. Mm-hmm. And in the end, we're going to, I think, be pretty successful. Mm-hmm. <coughs> she also brings like a lot of energy to the team, which makes the girls more energetic, I mm-hmm. think. And they work hard every single day and I think that starts with coach because she comes in positive Mm -hmm. and energetic and that just like rubs off on all of us too. So not only a new coach but a new conference Mm -hmm. as well so I mean some of the opponents are similar they're familiar faces There's a few new ones a couple new ones but um, how, how are you approaching the season in terms of the conference are you Do you feel as though it's a big difference? Do you feel as though we know these teams? Like, what do you expect the competition level to be compared to past seasons? 
I feel like the competition level is going to be relatively the same, mm -hmm. but we do have a few new um, new teams mm -hmm. um, that are going to be challenging. Mm -hmm. um, one team is, I think, very, very tall. Mm -hmm. um, we're not so tall. <laughs> right. So that's going to be very, very challenging. But I feel like if we just keep doing the little things mm -hmm. and get the little things down and keep working hard, right. I think we'll, we'll be right with those teams. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Dasha? Yeah, I think our old conference had some teams that were not necessarily like guaranteed wins, but we kind of went in with right. like a, oh, we should win this, mm -hmm. and we didn't come out as good as mm -hmm. we should have. And then this year, like we're gonna have to come out on top of our game every mm -hmm. single game mm -hmm. to ensure those wins. So, Alyssa, you mentioned the size a little bit on the team. So, mm -hmm. is it safe to say that we're gonna see more of a, a fast-paced? sort of a team this year to compensate for the height, like sort of a spacing the floor kind of an offense? Or what? is that right, or what would you expect? Um, I would say it's going to be a little bit more uh, fast pace. Mm -hmm. um, but in times, I think mm -hmm. since we are so young, mm -hmm. I think we have, we're have we going to be slowing things right, up and right. you know setting mm -hmm. things up mm -hmm. um, to make it easier to you know go for a good mm -hmm. basket rather right. than just a rushed basket. Mm -hmm. um, but most definitely, I think, we're going to be playing a little bit faster. Mm -hmm. um, but it might be similar to last year, because we did play a little bit fast, but we were short last year, too. Right. So it wasn't very, very <laughs> different. But All right, and Natasha, uh, this would be the last question. You brought it up before. Um, about in, in, the, in the old conference, you kind of had those wins where you kind of considered it a given when you went in. So yeah. do you think that it actually helps knowing that every game isn't going to be a given that you need to give it your all every single game? I definitely think so because mm -hmm. in those weeks where we had like a couple bad teams maybe like our practices weren't so good as like oh we just have this team like we don't have to practice as hard which I think this year like everyone will be more focused for all the games which mm -hmm. is needed and I think it'll be very different yeah. Well thank you guys very much for being here. I wish you the best of luck this Thank year. Thank you so much. Thanks for having everyone here. Thanks. And don't go anywhere because I'll tell you who will be here on the next episode of Beyond the Arch right after the break. So who's going to do what? I'll pack the dead batteries. Great. I'll only put what I don't need into a duffel bag. Perfect. That's totally unhelpful. No problem. Meanwhile, I will try to comfort everyone by speaking in a calm voice. And who is going to handle supplies? I can forget to do a list for us. Thanks, pal. We couldn't be any less prepared. I'm proud of you guys. Talk to your kids about who to call, where to meet, what to pack. Visit ready.gov slash kids for tips and information. Alvin and the Chipmunks want to remind you, bacteria can hide in food and make you ill. Wow. But you can keep bacteria from ruining your day with four simple steps. Clean. I'm waiting for the rinse cycle. Separate. <laughs> And chill. We chipmunks are notoriously tidy. Check your steps. The road trip to food safety starts at foodsafety.gov. There are 16 million children struggling with hunger in America. That's one in five daughters, sons, neighbors, and classmates who don't know where their next meal is coming from. Yet billions of pounds of good food go to waste every year. It's time we do something about it. Feeding America is a nationwide network of food banks that helps provide meals to millions of kids and families in need. Visit feedingamerica.org to help them feed even more. Together, we can solve hunger. Together, we're Feeding America. I'd like to thank Alyssa and Natasha for coming on the show tonight and wish them a healthy, successful season. Next week, Beyond the Arch continues our look into basketball when we explore the men's basketball team as three of the athletes will be on the show to talk about the upcoming season. Until then, head over to TV Marywood's official YouTube page to watch full episodes of the show. Be sure to follow TV Marywood on Twitter 
and like us on Facebook. Until next time, always remember to look past the jersey and beyond the arch. From everyone at TV Marywood, have a great night.